what might look like a step backwards is actually two giant steps forward on the future path of advanced aircraft engines. Since 1941, the Lewis Research Center has developed an international reputation for its research on jet propulsion systems. However, in 1977, the researchers at Lewis began to take a new look at the propeller. Their challenge was to combine the efficiency of the propeller with the power of the turbine engine. What has evolved is ATP, the Advanced Turboprop Project. Keith Sievers, manager of the NASA Advanced Turboprop Project office at the Lewis Research Center. Back after World War II, uh, jets were the, the thing, uh, the coming thing. Propellers were very efficient in those days, but uh, they couldn't go fast, they couldn't go to high altitudes. And quite frankly, they were not jazzy like uh, jet engines, and which gave way then to turbofan engines and high bypass ratio engines. And uh, when fuel was cheap, people didn't worry much about it. Uh, Ten cents a gallon, as long as they get speed, uh, high altitude capability, which the air transport system required. Uh, propellers just uh, kind of withered on the vine for 20 or 30 years. The Arab oil embargo of the early 70s not only hit American consumers at the corner gas station, but was also reflected at the airline ticket counter due to the soaring price of jet fuel. In 1973, the price of a gallon of jet fuel was 12 cents and represented one quarter of the direct operating cost of the jet. By 1979, the price had risen to 63 cents a gallon and represented half of the direct operating cost. In 1981, the cost of jet fuel was over a dollar eight cents a gallon. With the rising fuel prices, a fuel-efficient propeller engine again became the object of an aeronautical propulsion research effort. The researchers' objectives were to develop a power plant that would be fuel efficient, do 0.8 Mach, cruise at 35,000 feet, operate at a reduced noise level. Well, these propellers look a lot different. They're very highly swept. They're very thin compared to old propellers. And the thing that hits you first is there are eight to ten blades uh, on these rather than three or four as if you've been accustomed to in the past. And what the sweep does in, in the propeller and the thinness is, is to reduce the drag losses at the higher tip speeds and higher Mach numbers. It also helps to reduce the source noise of the propellers. Uh, the higher blade count, and we've loaded these blades up much higher than old propellers, so that we can get a lot more power at a lot smaller diameter. And this saves weight on the propeller, it saves weight on the engine, and it also uh, packages better on the aircraft. Earlier turbo turboprops were limited uh, both in horsepower and in uh, flight speed, uh, mainly because of the compressibility effects that occur at the propeller tips. Um, with the recent advances in computer design technology, we are now able to optimize the blade shape to minimize the compressibility effects occurring at the blade tips, allowing the planes to fly faster, up to 600 miles an hour, and at higher altitudes, up to 35,000 feet. As you approach the speed of sound, uh, you run into a problem where the apparent pressure that you're trying to push through suddenly takes a quantum leap. And because the blades are very large in diameter, up to 13 feet in diameter. The uh, tip speed is upwards of 800 feet per second, which is just under uh, Mach 1, or the, sp the speed of sound. As you try to push through that uh, Mach 1 uh, range, you run into this compressibility factor. It's almost like running into a brick wall with the blade. The blade construction is now a composite type arrangement where you have a metallic leading edge, such as aluminum, and a graphite epoxy resigned internal construction that allows the blades to be very lightweight. And because they're lighter weight, minimizes the centrifugal stresses that occur when the propeller system is rotated at 12,000 RPM. The ultimate goal is to save fuel. Uh, commercial aircraft and also with military aircraft where uh, it can be applied. And uh, this fuel saving is very dramatic compared to uh, the fuel burn that aircraft have today, 
uh, such as a 727, 737, that type of aircraft. aircraft. Uh, a prop fan driven airplane can do the same mission at uh, like uh, 40 to 50 percent uh, of the fuel that they use today. If you look at just the U.S. fleet uh, existing today for medium to short range aircraft, and I'm talking 727s, 737s, DC-9s, MD-80s, uh, those aircraft in a typical year burn about 5 billion gallons of fuel. If these aircraft were uh, equipped with uh, prop fans, they could do the same mission they're doing today and save two to two and a half billion gallons of fuel per year. Propeller-driven airplanes have traditionally been noisy. Advanced turboprop researchers are tackling the problem of trying to build a turboprop to rival the relative quiet and smoothness of the jet. Well, we've had to look at the entire aircraft as a system. We didn't look just at sticking a new widget called a prop fan on them. We had to look at what did it do to the rest of the aircraft. And particularly, we're concerned about passenger comfort. It doesn't matter how much fuel we save if the people don't like it or they're uncomfortable, uh, sound, vibration, then they're not going to ride it, so it won't matter. So part of our project goal is to, to make sure that the people have the same comfort that they're used to on today's wide-body aircraft. In addition, uh, we're concerned about community noise. These things are loud, and we have to provide the technology so that they can live within the existing FAR 36 uh, Stage 3 regulations, which are laws that we have to abide by in, uh, around airports and communities. Most of the time, we really don't even know it's running inside the cockpit. It's that quiet. And we're only, what, 15 feet away from it. After several years of wind tunnel and static engine testing, a full flight test of the advanced propeller system was held on May 19, 1987 at Lockheed Georgia Company in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, so far, operation has been very good. Uh, everything is about as predicted that the engineers had predicted uh, from their initial assessment of the program. We haven't really had any big surprises, I should say. Uh, when you pull the prop fan in and add power to it, uh, the pilot really knows it. But there again, this airplane wasn't really designed to, to fly with an engine out on, a, on the left wing. Uh, but again, what our engineers predicted is pretty much what's happening with the airplane. So I'd have to say, so far it looks good. So far it looks very good. If all goes to plan, prop fans will probably be fitted on short to medium range aircraft. And we hope to have, uh, as, a, as a part of the project goal, uh, to have the technology in hand by the end of the 1980s so that uh, industry, uh, the engine people, the aircraft people can make marketing decisions because it uh, involves a lot of private capital that uh, makes or breaks their companies. So the way things are proceeding uh, right now, it looks like uh, Boeing and, and uh, McDonnell Douglas are aiming for new aircraft industries with prop fans in, say, the 1991, 92, 93 timeframe.